Less drunk. Way back when I made a video about Super Nintendo games based on action movies in June of 2017, a few people said I forgot about a game, The Untouchables. Was this my plan all along to skip it in that video and build up to a much anticipated video about its brilliance? Uh, no. Actually, this game is not based on the movie starring Kevin Costner, it's based on the short-lived 1993 TV reboot, which is weird because apparently all the other Untouchables games from the time were based on the movie. I'm talking about the games on the NES, Amiga, Commodore 64, ZX Spectrum, on and on. But I guess the publisher and developer Ocean decided to base the Super Nintendo edition on the TV reboot instead. In the end, it really makes no difference either way because each of the games are pretty similar in gameplay and in structure, with the one major difference in the Super Nintendo game being able to choose which of the four missions here that you want to start with. Finish those four and unlock a fifth, which is a boss fight against Al Capone. The first mission is a gallery shooter and you use L and R to move left and right. The Y button switches to a crosshair, then you aim with the D-pad, press Y to shoot again, and then A to reload. Oh, and you only get two shots per reload and you only have 30 seconds to reduce the blue foe meter you see up top. There's eight different sections of this that you have to complete, and it just drags on and on and on. With the same enemies popping up from the same places, it really gets boring. And yeah, as you might guess, the controls here freaking suck. They're not intuitive at all. But the biggest problem of all is how slow the crosshair moves around. It's so frustrating, especially when you manage to get your timing right, only to find out you have to reload because you only get two freaking shots with your crappy shotgun. Ugh. Thankfully, the second mission is just a straight-ahead run-and-gun style. This is a little more like it, but again, the goofy controls get in the way. It's Y or A to shoot, X to jump, and B to duck? What? Yeah, pressing down just has you aim downward. Again, it's completely unintuitive. It's a run and gun. You don't need to reinvent the wheel with cutesy controls. Just stick with what works. In games like Contra, if you want to shoot down, you have to jump first. What's wrong with that? And again, the time limit is an issue. You have to be on the lookout for these clocks to extend your time. And then eventually, ugh, it's back to the gallery shooter stages with your god-awful shotgun. And Mission 3 is more of the same, but at least in this one, you get to use a Tommy gun, and not having to reload every two seconds makes this a lot lot more palatable. It reminds me a little bit of the Sega Genesis version of Dick Tracy. The fourth mission changes things up again and has you playing from a top-down perspective like Smash TV, only here you wander around and rescue hostages. This mission also isn't that bad, it's pretty simple straightforward stuff, but it's still pretty dang tough. You make your way through the building, get 100% rescued as you can see the percentage in the upper right, and then get the hell out of there before a bomb blows up the whole building. But then you're back to the crappy gallery shooter stage with your crappy shotgun and a never-ending gauntlet of a boss fight against Al Capone. At least the game changes it up a bit by allowing you to duck behind a wall, but still, this is just brutal. Through it all, you get four lives and no continues, no saves or passwords either. So yeah, Untouchables does have some okay stuff going for it, but the bad here is really bad. The same can be said for the NES game. I mean, at least the controls are okay, if only because there's fewer buttons to work with, so there's less of a chance for the dev team to screw it up. But the platforming in that one is just, ugh. The gallery shooter stages don't give you any cover other than a corner, and plus there's all sorts of other wonkiness, like sometimes you can aim the cursor and sometimes you can't. It's just a mess. The thing is, with the Super Nintendo Untouchables, I mean, the controls are responsive, as in everything works as it should for the most part. It's just such a strange layout that it takes some time to get used to, and I can't recommend making that kind of time investment in a game that's just halfway decent at best. If you like the idea of blending these two genres together, there's a Super Famicom game that never left Japan called The Great Battle 5, where you play as SD versions of superheroes like Ultraman and Gundam. And if you like the whole Untouchables gangster motif, then check out the arcade game Dead connection. That's a way better game. That's a lot more fun. The Untouchables for Super Nintendo is untouchable for a reason. It's just not very good. I'm sorry, I just couldn't resist such a bad pun. It was sitting right there, but I want to thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.